What's cracking fight fans, welcome to MMA Fight Watch. Today we're going to be breaking down UFC London's main event, Anderson the Spider Silva up against Michael the Count Bisbing. If you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And as always guys, I'd really appreciate it if you'd share this video wherever you're watching it. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, freaking Tumblr, Reddit, whatever you guys use, make sure you share this video. Tell people they're watching, tell your mates you're watching. I'd really appreciate that and let's get straight into the video. So the first thing I like to do when I'm breaking down fights or, you know, doing my predictions or my preview, I like to look at the odds. I'm going to bam the odds up on screen right now. And as you can see, Silva is the favourite. I'll read out the decimal odds. Decimal odds, he's 1.33 right now. Bisbing is 3.50. So obviously Silva, very favourite there. Bisbing almost 3, 3.5 three to 1 odds out on, uh, you know, being the underdog here. If we look at the money... Uh, the what's called money line, the money line odds, which is the American odds. Uh, Silva is minus 305 favorite. Bisbing is plus 250 underdog. Now, just looking at these odds, I feel like Bisbing should no way he should be that far out of favor at home. I should I'd see them odds moved a little bit. Silva shouldn't be that far of a favor, but we're going to use that to our advantage. Hopefully, make a little bit of money. So let's get into this video and uh, hopefully break down some of the stats and I'm going to tell you guys some of the reasons why I think the fight's going to go the way I think it's going to go. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the record. Silva's got a pretty decent record, 33-6-1. Bisbing with a 26-7. and seven. Uh, Silva is four years old now, while Bisbing's four years younger at 36. The reach advantage is uh, around two and a half inches. Uh, Silva's got a 77.5 inch reach. Bisbing with a 75. Both guys are 6 foot 2 They'll both be weighing in 185 pounds. Silva is a southpaw. Bisbing is an orthodox fighter. So just looking at them stats right there, not much to choose between them. Obviously, Anderson Silva has had a lot more decorative background in fighting and mixed martial arts, where while Bisbing, you know, has come up through the European scene, made a name for himself, has never really quite made it to the heights of Anderson Silva. Obviously, he's never been a champion. But Silva has had a drastic decline in the last couple of years, so that, you're going to have to keep that in your mind at all stages here. The first thing I want to look at is uh, common opponents. Now this is going to interest in a bit of MMA math for you guys. I know MMA math is pretty shite. It doesn't really work too often. They've got a lot of common opponents. Maybe six or seven op common opponents. But uh, Bisbing has never, or Silva has never lost an opponent that Bisbing has beaten. While uh, Silva has beaten loads of guys that have beaten Bisbing. Guys like Dan Henderson, Son and Vitor have all kicked the shit out of Bisbing. And Silva has wiped the floor with them. That was back a good few years ago now, you know, back when Silva was in his prime, you'd say. So, you know, you kind of have to not credit that so much. But it's interesting just to note that of all the common opponents, uh, a couple of guys they've both beaten. But of the guys uh, Bisming's lost to, Silva's beaten a lot of them. So that's very interesting to note. What else we got to look at here? I want to talk about some talking points on Anderson Silva. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the hype. There's a lot of hype around this guy. Obviously, a lot of people say he's the greatest of all time, which, you know, it's hard to not deny. Some of the stuff he was bringing into the octagon was absolutely insane. So he's going to be overhyped a little bit. He obviously has an amazing skill set. His striking is one of the best in the UFC, but in the last couple of years, he just hasn't really showed it. And... Uh, Obviously, we're going to talk about his last three fights, which is his most recent ones, which is the most important in UFC. You're only as good as your last fight. His last fight was up against Nate Diaz, which was a very poor fight, to be honest. Nate Diaz was lying on the ground, pretending. He was just waiting, trying to get Silva to strike with him. Silva wasn't really letting his hands go. Didn't look great in that fight. Both of them ended up getting done for drugs. Silva got done for steroids, only out for a year fighting tomorrow. And uh, Diaz is still out because he got done for the third time for weed, which is kind of funny. Out longer for weed than steroids. So Silva was done for steroids, which is a very big black mark in my in my opinion on him. You know, Brazilian fighters have a bad reputation on steroids or about steroids. A lot of their camps, you know, you hear rumors, the whispers. A lot of the Brazilian guys have popped. So it's not great to kind of ban them in like that. But look, you got to have some suspicion there. And uh, one of the things as well, a lot of people say... It was the first time he was ever tested out of competition. He's been tested before, and this is before the whole new USADA deal came in. So this is back on the old style of uh, testing, where they test you randomly, you know, maybe once. Uh, and they probably wouldn't even test half the roster, you know what I mean? So it was very poor testing, and they'd always test on fight night, but it was probably easy enough to beat the fight night tests. So that kind of puts his legacy... With a bit of an asterisk beside it, because we know he popped once, and the only time he's tested out of competition, he popped. And, you know... If you think about it, his career was kind of resurgent. He kind of became a mainstream star, started beating people 
when he was 35, 36. And you see a lot of guys right now that are 35, 36, and they just can't cut it up against the new up-and-coming guys. I know the UFC level probably wasn't as high back then, but it's interesting to note that he possibly could have been using steroids the whole time. It's hard to say he was or he wasn't, but it's a possibility. It's a definite possibility. So this time we know he definitely will not be on steroids. He's 40 years old. He's hit that 40 year old mark. He definitely won't be on him because USADA will catch him straight away. So it's not a point. If he even tries it, it's fucking pointless. It's stupid. So we don't think he will, you know, be on the steroids this time. So how that affects his performance, we don't know. If you look before that Nick Diaz performance or that Nick Diaz fight, he had two fights up against Weidman, where Weidman came in and ended up as the favourite in the first fight. He was kind of the underdog for a while, but then towards the end, a lot of people were throwing money on him. He was the favourite. He took the belt uh, in you know dramatic fashion. He was beating Silva, and Silva just got a little bit lax like he normally does. But this time, he didn't manage to weave his way out of it. He tried to dodge it, but Silva... Or, but, uh, Bisbing, not Bisbing. Uh, but Weidman just kept coming through, eventually caught him with that punch and KO'd him. Second fight, you, we all know what happens, uh, you know, he was doing bad again, then he threw a leg kick and uh, his, he got, his leg kick got checked by Weidman and it snapped off and that was horrible, even t talking about it's kind of making me feel a bit weird. It was horrible, but you know, he looks like he's well past his prime. Other things we can talk about him. You know, you know, he's got maybe a weak mentality as well, I think he might have a weak mentality. There's a lot of hype around him, you know, the drugs, the drugs is a mad thing, is a thing I've written down here, the drugs could be very important. Obviously, the skill level that he was at a couple of years ago is not, you know, it's not in question. He used to be one of the best in the world, but I think he's on the way out. And Bisping's not a guy that's really on the way up, but he's a guy that's maybe got the skill set to cause Silva some problems. So tell me what you guys think in the comments about what all happened with Silva. Tell me if you disagree with me, you know, you might just think I'm talking absolute bollocks. Tell me in the comments. Next thing we're going to move on to Bisbing. First thing you got to say about Bisbing, he's a good talker. He's a smart, quick talker. He likes to promote fights. You're interested in his fights, even if he's fighting a guy that's not too interested. It's not an interesting fight. He'll make it interesting. Another thing to know about him, he's a, you know, he's a nearly man. He's the, the guy that always gets to, the, gets to the final, but just can't do it. He just can't get that last fight to get him a title shot. He's nearly there every time. This is the biggest fight of his career. He's at home soil, home advantage. He looks more determined. Uh, he looks better than ever. He looks stronger than ever. He looks like, you know, this is his moment. It's the biggest moment in his career so far. He's been talking a lot about his legacy recently. He's even said that he's a nearly man. And I think, you know, he's in the best mental, mental frame for this game. A bit like Conor McGregor. He's strong mentally for this fight. I think he's going to be a little bit stronger than uh, Silva, who looked a bit, 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 bit uh, you know... I don't want to say jaded, but he looked a bit, you know, a bit worn down by Bisbing's antics, by Bisbing calling him out on the steroids, stuff like that. He just looked a bit tired of it. So that's that's what I think about the two guys. What other stats we can look into? There's other stuff as well we can look into, just uh, the percentage stats. But look, the thing I like to see is uh, Silva has one of the highest knockdowns in the UFC. He's got 17 knockdowns. No one's knocked anyone down more than uh, Silva. He's got one of the highest... Uh, Significant strike accuracy was 63%, which is pretty good. Bisbing has a, a a couple of stats, which is really interesting. He's got one of the he's one of the most uh, longest fighters in the UFC. He's got one of the most longest times in the ring, which is very interesting. He's in the top five. Uh, he's got a, he's got 1,285 significant strikes landed, which is the number one in the UFC. So he's landed 1,285 significant strikes inside the octagon. He, obviously, he's been in there for as much as anyone else in the UFC as well, which is really interesting. So after breaking down all them stats, there's you know there's certain things I just gotta have a couple of hang-ups on. You know, Silva, he was the greatest of all time a couple of years ago. You know, he looks so good, but the the losses to Weidman, I think, has taken a lot out of him. And uh, especially that leg break. You know, Bisbing, he's nearly man, he's nearly got it. He looks decent at 185. This is his best chance ever. You know, he's he's been playing well with the mind games, he looks decent. And Silva, I think, is past his best. Tell me what you guys think is coming. I think Silva is going out. Biz being, you know, he's got one last push at the title. And I just think everything points towards a Biz being win here. I'm just feeling Biz being. I feel like his demeanor is better. He looks sharp. His training looks good. He looks absolutely on point. I think Silva is the opposite. Silva, you know, he's got all the steroid problems. He obviously has a skill level, but I don't think he's got the mentality anymore. I think that leg break... The, the knockout and the leg break was obviously devastating. He comes back against 
Diaz, he doesn't really shoot that much. Diaz doesn't want to get into a good uh, into a scrap with him, so Diaz tries to stay on the outside. Doesn't really work, and Diaz loses the decision, but he just didn't let his shots go. And I think Bisping is going to be all over him. He's going to use the wrestling. He's going to try and take him down. He's going to try and ground a pound. And he won't want to stay in the striking range of Anderson Silva. He's going to try and get close to him, take him down, control him with his wrestling, and ground and pound the shit out of him. And for that reason, I think Bisping takes... Maybe not a decision because we know it's the main event. It could go five rounds, but I think this, I think Bisping takes this fight. Does it go five rounds? I think he could grind him out in five rounds easily, or I think he could take the TKO. And um, when I'm looking at these odds right back at the start, we got Silva at one point three three, and we got Bisping at three point five. I think they're really good odds for Bisping, and he's gonna be my pick, guys for this event. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Who are you guys picking? Tell me what stats or what you know what like what one one thing. Maybe you think could change this fight. I'm talking, not talking about in the fight, but like one thing, like Silva, Silva's maybe mentality, you know, Bisbing's mental fortitude, Bisbing's wrestling. Tell me one thing in the comments what you think will change this fight. Give me your predictions. Tell me who you think's going to fight. I think I might do another video later on pulling out the rest of the card, but it's not too interesting and there's not too many odds that I think are way off. But this one, I definitely think Bisbing is worth good money at this. So I'm definitely going to be throwing some money on, but, uh, you know, gamble responsibly, guys. You don't be betting too much what you don't have. And always, guys, it's just my opinion. You know, I'm not some sort of uh, amazing expert. We do get things wrong. And MMA is one of the hardest sports to predict out there right now. But we're looking at the stats. We're breaking everything down. And I just feel everything is going towards Bisbing right now. Silva is a bit overhyped. I think Bisbing takes this one at home and then maybe gets a title shot for pretty soon. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. So if you did like it, make sure you smash the like. Really appreciate it. Share it out there with everybody. Uh, check out all the links, social media in the description. Cannot wait for this event. And I will be tweeting about it when it comes out and we do watch it as well. It's going to be fun. Hopefully, Bisbee can do the job for us. Tell me who your picks are in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Good luck.